Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Yuki Kasuya. I work for KDD Research as a research engineer. Today, I'd like to introduce DMA. That stands for Distributed Monitoring and Analysis. The first, I'd like to introduce our members. On the left side, Takashi-san and Mibu-san from NEC. In the center, Hayashi-san and Sugiyama-san from Red Heart. And the other side, Niwa-san and me from KDL Research. So this is the agenda of this presentation. First, I explain one of the telecom's goal. And the next is our requirements and the challenges for monitoring. And the third is a solution that is a DMA and the architecture of DMA. And the fourth is our feasible study. And the last is a conclusion. So let's start first part. Uh, one of the telecom goal is uh, to provide high quality network. But what is high quality network? High speed, low latency, less packet loss, not congested. For mobile network, a wider area is also an important factor. But I believe that no network outage is the most important factor for high quality network because today, customers feel that connecting network at several area in any time is very ordinary thing. So if network is outage, Customers cannot uh, share their life activity uh, through SNS or OTT apps like this. And uh, so that cause customer will get angry maybe. And the telecom lose liability of the network. That is a not a good situation. And today, telecoms are moving to using NFV. So we have to consider how to provide a high quality network in NFA. And generally speaking, in NFA, to create new network service is very easy because orchestrator manage all components. But how to operate NFA? Uh, as you know, uh, this picture indicates uh, architecture of uh, NFA. In my understand, that is a little complex because there are massive components, not only VNF, but also orchestrator, the VNF manager, and OpenStack as a beam. And also there is a virtualization layer, and we have to consider uh, using acceleration technique uh, like uh, DPDK and SRV and pass-through to accelerate internal packet process. And also, you have to consider like CPU pinning or CPU isolation or hardware architecture like NUMA to accelerate packet process. So we have to change our current operation style, suitable for NFV. And where is the uh, target new operation style? That is a proactive operation style. For example, that means uh, before hardware or software and something is broken or long, do prevention, like, my, like migration or uh, evacuation or uh, basically switching out to standby and so on. All the uh, operation style is a reactive operation. Operators maintenance or recover or repair uh, manually in 24 hours, seven days. It takes very long time for troubleshooting and a very high cost. But we are moving to a periodic operation style using like uh, automation technology uh, like orchestrator. And if hardware is broken, do uh, uh, evacuation and uh, uh, once per month uh, to go to data center and exchange, uh, replace and hardware, that is a periodic operation. But our target is a proactive operation. So how to move to proactive operation? So uh, there is only three steps from reactive operation to proactive operation. Uh, this slide indicates our reactive operation. And the fault detection means uh, from 
something is broken or happen to receive alarm. That is a fraud detection time. And the resolve means uh, uh, like identify a failure and estimating service impact or uh, creating a report to uh, business revision. It takes very long time in this process. And the recover means uh, like rebooting our processes on the hardware or uh, evacuation and uh, so on. So that is a reactive operation style. So let's move to a first step to proactive operation. First step is only minor change. Recover first, resolve next. Because uh, resolve including uh, so, uh, estimating service impact or creating report to business division, that is not so important for customer. Recover process is more important than uh, recover uh, resolve for customer. And the uh, resolve process is very, uh, takes a uh, very long time. For example, uh, in my experience, I'm working at uh, operation division. Uh, when uh, something is broken uh, along with the su some service impact, uh, manager of business division or my boss asked me uh, to create a federal report including a service impact. And I submitted federal report to them. And after a few minutes, they always asked, any update? I uh, answered, sorry, uh, no, at that time. And after a few minutes, they asked again, any update? Again, again, again. That is a very bothering for troubleshooting. That is not important for customers. So important is uh, recover first and resolve next. That is a uh, first step to proactive operation. And the second step is uh, very easy, to shorten recovering time using automation technology like orchestrator. In reactive operation, operator recover manually, but periodic operation and uh, proactive operation, orchestrator recover automatically. That is the second step to proactive operation. And the third step is uh, also like now, second step, to shorten fault detection time. But there are some challenges like this area. Because in NFA, there are a lot of uh, VNF and uh, several components we have to monitor. And also, uh, we want to uh, collect several items to detect silent failure. So uh, next part, uh, Mibsan will explain uh, what is a challenge to shorten a uh, fault detection time. Okay, in summary, uh, first part, uh, Telecom wants to provide high quality network and they should move to proactive operation. And in proactive operation, uh, fault detect, uh, to shorten fault detection time is an important factor, but there is uh, some challenges. Okay, so maybe san uh, could you explain our uh, next part? Okay, so uh, I'm Ryota Mibu, working for the NEC. So NEC is uh, so one of VNF operators, so I'll explain the, our uh, requirement and challenges uh, in VNF vendor perspective. So uh, here's a list of the uh, NFA applications. Uh, we call those uh, uh, VNF. And uh, the, the list is just cover the one of the uh, NFA use case, uh, which is uh, CPE. So it means we also have another use cases, another functions uh, should be covered. And the, the reason why I list the C CPE is that those functions are, are, <coughs> are historically put on the, the customer side on the office or, or residence, so those will be, become a large number uh, if you virtualized. And here's a, a list, and it's, uh, it's, for instance, we have the remote access functions, and the security and storage, and traffic control, and more things are coming. So it means there are various <coughs> variety of the, the functions and each have a uh, different requirement in, in, in order to identify the, the, 
the, the healthy of the functions. For instance, for remote access, we have to track the, the uh, uh, res number of the reserved packet and uh, trans transmitted uh, packet. And for the security, we, in most cases, we have to, to watch the, the delay or, or duration to go through the, the functions. And for the storage, we also need to, to check the, the response, uh, uh, response time. So, so there's a bunch of things have to, to uh, uh, monitor and uh, various types uh, of the, the uh, parameters have to be uh, captured. So uh, for, for the proactive operations, it's obvious we have to uh, increase uh, some or, or do, do some challenges in, the, in three uh, point. The first point, uh, we have to increase the, the monitoring target, uh, which could be a bunch of resources such as VMs and bunch of networks. And second, we also have to increase the monitoring items or parameters of those uh, bunch of resources. And we also have to shorten the monitoring intervals uh, in order to find out uh, uh, the failure situations quickly and to to capture the failure situation uh, uh, obviously or uh, uh, correctly. So let's go through one by one. For the increasing uh, monitoring target, we, we have the assumption that we all the uh, network functions, functions uh, will be supplied as a VM or sometimes container, might be. <clears throat> and <clears throat> those VMs are, uh, are some of the VMs or some of the, the uh, NFA applications can be deployed as a single VM or physical machine. And all the uh, traffic can be go through the one entity. But in most cases, uh, the uh, most of services requires deployed uh, the VMs per user or per tenant. The, the, the reason is uh, there is a, a performance concern and security concern, and sometimes uh, the customer requires, the, or customer and applications requires different configuration. So uh, those are the reason that we have to buy the VMs for the services. So uh, the thinking of the near future uh, vision, uh, talking about, uh, for instance, service function chaining, uh, we have uh, 100 VMs per services in order to provide uh, the uh, uh, services uh, to the uh, multiple tenant users. And those services will be uh, uh, listed like 10 to 20. It means we have to cover a uh, thousand instances. And those will be those number of the, the virtual resources will be uh, should be uh, monitored. And the items or parameters, so uh, uh, in general, crowd monitoring provides some uh, uh, metrics for audit or some other uh, purposes. Uh, but for the proactive operation and, and for the uh, fault detection or prediction for the product operation, we need more uh, parameters or metrics uh, have to be monitored. So, because uh, uh, one of the reason, it's not that only the telecom uh, requirement, but uh, obviously uh, some uh, enterprise, <coughs> excuse me, enterprise or IT uh, uh, multi solution already saying that we need AI or some intelligent uh, intelligency to detect a failure. And the, the reason is we have a uh, uh, bunch of the type of data. And so it, it's not the telecom specific, but yeah, we obviously have to uh, capture various uh, data to identify the faulty situation. Uh, for instance, we are uh, we are thinking, we are assuming that we need uh, 100, 1,000 data from the one uh, server, which means a bunch of machines. And performance indicator will be the, the CPU utilization, or memory, or uh, IOs, so it bias. 
and we also have to handle the fault uh, message or notifications as well. So here's a one example uh, w from the, the NHC's product, uh, which, uh, which is a master scope environment analyzer that support one uh, uh, interesting use cases that I want to share here. So uh, it's, it, will, it will consume various metrics uh, from the, some metric services outside of that component and in, uh, do some uh, correlation and figure out uh, or point out there's some uh, 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 a suspicious situation. In most cases, that could be a faulty situation. And one uh, uh, interesting uh, use case is finding out that, that, that there are some CPU issues, uh, workload issues. So for instance, if you checking the network bandwidth and CPU utilization, and if network bandwidth is going high and CPU utilization becomes high, it, it's, it's normal. It's working correctly. But if the network bandwidth get down and CPU utilization remains as a high, it might be there should be some problems. So those situations uh, cannot be identified if you seeing the, the each matrix and or one matrix. We have to uh, check the both matrix and correlate them. So uh, we really need to to capture uh, various parameters in the same time. And the something is we have to shorten the monitoring intervals. Uh, there's a two uh, obvious reason. One reason is we have to detect the failure situation as soon as possible. If we have long interval, uh, for instance, uh, a default configuration of the, the uh, serometer, uh, it was uh, 10 minutes. It's 10 minutes. So uh, it's very hard to, to capture the failure as soon as possible because uh, it has a different purpose of the monitoring. And the, the second reason is we, we have to uh, get the, the, the metrics uh, very frequently so that we can find the uh, uh, issues. Uh, thinking of the network bandwidth, uh, if you're getting the, the, uh, the uh, packet count uh, every one minute, it's very hard to identify the network bus traffic. Okay, so uh, for the summarize my summarize my part, uh, we are thinking that to to, to realize the proactive operation uh, for for shorten the detection time or do some prediction of the failure situation, we need to to think about uh, at least uh, one thousand of uh, targets, and we might need uh, hundreds. We have to capture the hundreds uh, of the, the parameters or items, and we also have to check the, the, those parameters uh, within a, a 0 0.1 second interval. But uh, those are, uh, it, those requirements depends on the VNF, so it, it could be biased. Uh, of the, the, your deployment or your selection of the uh, NFA that will be served to the end users. And, but yeah, we still have the assumption that we have to achieve these uh, challenges. So I'll uh, get back to Kasia san He will explain how we can solve them. Yeah. Thank you, Mibi san, for explaining. And we have three uh, challenges and the requirements regarding uh, targets and the items uh, in Java and how to solve these challenges. Uh, does the uh, current monitoring architecture solve this problem? Unfortunately, I don't think so. And uh, there are some limitations. Uh, uh, for example, one is uh, one monitoring function now have to manage a lot of targets and uh, several uh, items of these targets and some metrics we want to collect very in short, short interval, like 0 0.1 second. So uh, I think that uh, one monitoring function does not uh, uh, manage uh, like this huge data. So uh, how to solve uh, this uh, problem? Uh, to cut off targets or uh, to cut off items or longest uh, interval? 
Uh, but that is not uh, suitable for our requirements. So our solution is uh, reducing targets that one monitoring function have to manage. So that is a solution is a uh, distribute monitoring function into each computing node with analytics engine. That is a DMA, that is our solution. So when each computing node has its own monitoring function, that means monitoring process is complete in each computing node. So what is a good point of this framework? Uh, you can do a uh, real-time monitoring. Uh, this uh, real-time means uh, fine-graded. You can uh, confirm uh, detail of uh, some metrics on some data. And uh, that is uh, less load because uh, one monitoring function uh, have to manage a few VM or its own host OS. And also that is a uh, very scalable because that is not depending on the number of competing nodes. So this is a detailed architecture of DMA. A computing node has a polar agent or a collector agent and an e-memory database and an analytics engine and an evaluator and a transmitter. So uh, polar agent, uh, for example, collect uh, metrics from guest OS and the host OS, and the collector insert this data into a memory database and uh, send directory evaluator, and the analytics engine analyze this data on in-memory, and the transmitter send only analyzing result to uh, operation support system or directly to orchestrator for recover. So that is a detailed architecture of DMA. But you wonder, uh, there are a lot of metrics, so the, uh, you don't have to uh, uh, correct uh, several metrics uh, to centralize uh, the database. That is a no, uh, the combination. So some uh, metrics you have to collect to centralize database to analyze the behavior of your infrastructure or network, uh, like uh, left uh, image, like to ser using zero meter. Uh, but you don't have to collect uh, data uh, regarding uh, fault, uh, uh, fault, fault data. Uh, you can use uh, DMA framework for fault management. So some metrics you have to collect to a uh, centralized database, but uh, some metrics for uh, fault management you don't have to collect to a centralized database. There is a total architecture of regarding a meta or a data or some metrics. So uh, next part, uh, we evaluated how, what in our open source is suitable for DMA. So uh, could you explain uh, this part, hai -san? Sure. Thank you, Kasa-san. Uh, I'm Tomo Humihayashi of Red Hat. So I'm explaining the feasible study of what. So we need to clarify that the, what is the goal and the, what is the target. So as we explained before, the, this is the DMM architecture. So the, there is the various components, kinds of the notification collector database or such so on. But I, we, don't reinvent the wheel completely. I mean, not invent here as the uh, yesterday's keynotes. So we find the, uh, some open source project and then they put it in each component. It's the uh, better solution, we think. So today's uh, Fridgeable study is targeting of the uh, information correction and the database. So the evaluator, analytics engine, and transmitter is the feature work. So uh, so the, this feasible study is the um, identify which frameworks can be suitable or not suitable to our unique requirement of the status correction. Uh, we're thinking the uh, one scenario is inside the bug uh, environment, and then the, uh, we try identify the uh, this situation by each framework or not. So one scenario is the. Uh, detect microburst traffic. So, uh, so in the 1,000 seconds, the each 300 seconds, 
some bad guys sending the burst traffic means the UDP 8 kilobytes and the 1,000 seconds for each. So the, uh, we are thinking about the, uh, this is uh, one goal to identify the, uh, some failure cases. And then the, also we need to thinking about the CPU usage as well because the, uh, fra if the framework consuming the lots of CPU, we need to thinking about that. And target framework is a serial meter, correctity, and monasker. There is our lab equipment. So uh, Newton based RDO on top of the uh, CentOS, and then the Rabi, uh, RabbitMQ for uh, messaging queue and the MariaDB. This is kind of the uh, typical OpenStack. And the controller is one and the four compute nodes. So each framework we have, we need to have the backend DB. So now uh, four serial meter Gnocchi is used and the correctD is using the Redis and the Monasco uses the uh, influx DB. So they summarized the, our studies about the, to identify the microburst traffic by each framework. I mean the uh, serial meter, correctD, Monasco, and then we need to uh, whether this microburst, I mean the bad guy, is identified or not, and then how much CPU is used. So the, uh, from the CPU-wise, we need to correct the whole process for each uh, framework. So therefore, serial meter, API correct the notification, and then uh, correct the, the monasca is so on. And the for each parameters, we are, so the, um, as we mentioned before, the interval is very important. So there we checking from 300 seconds, 60 seconds, 10 seconds, one second. If the framework's allowing, there are 0.1 seconds is also. The, thus, uh, this chart is the serial meters uh, chart. The horizontal lines is indicated the time and then the uh, uh, vertical lines in the traffic. So looking at this stuff, from, uh, in the case of the one second interval, there is one uh, spike is identified, but not the uh, uh, two is uh, missing. In case of the correct D, the correct D supports uh, 0.1 second. At that time, so the correct D identified the three towers in the chart, it's good. So correct D identified the three bad guys. And, but uh, so the, for, uh, from the other uh, intervals, we couldn't identify it. Monasca is uh, similar to the uh, uh, serial meter. Regarding the CPU usage, is the uh, little bit uh, different than the uh, result. I mean, the uh, so serial meter consuming the lots of CPU. So that this is some of this, and then the uh, get look into the median side. One second uh, intervals, the uh, median of CPU usage is 226 percent. It's a little bit typically high. Looking at the correctly, seven percent for median, even though the max is the over 100. And then the Monasco is the uh, uh, good performance, except the uh, one second intervals on the compute node. So looking at these tasks, the uh, correctly identifying the uh, market burst traffic with the uh, kinds of the uh, reasonable CPU usage. So what we are thinking about the correctly is they are good, uh, feasible to our uh, requirement. But also this doesn't mean the other framework is bad, you know. So this is the, uh, uh, we uh, check the, uh, so each framework has each design and each purpose. So the accelerometer is used by telemetry so that they need to send in the data to the controller so that that's the data by design as, as well as the monasco. So uh, that's, uh, okay, one missing. So, the, uh, so in the back end of the correct D, we, we, uh, we using the Redis databases. This is the in-memory, so no storages to the data. But to now we're thinking this data is only using to analyze the data. We don't thinking about to store this data in somewhere. So at that time, the Redis is enough and uh, this could be fit. Okay, uh, so Kasuya-san is closing the conclusion. Yeah, 
Thank you, Hassan, for explaining the feasible study. And uh, uh, I hope you understand and correctly and read this is a very powerful tool and that is uh, suitable for our requirements. So uh, last part is a uh, conclusion of this part uh, of this presentation. So uh, telecoms uh, want to provide high quality network service and they should move to a uh, new operation style that is a proactive operation style. And in proactive operation style, to shorten for detection, and that means uh, to shorten monitoring is a very important factor. And our solution is DMA, distributed monitoring and analysis, uh, like this picture. And uh, at this presentation, we focused on uh, correct data and uh, uh, insert data into in-memory database. And our future work is uh, integrate uh, analysis engine and evaluator and the transmitter. And we have some plan uh, using uh, Congress as an analysis engine and the Scikit-Learn as a uh, machine learning uh, as an uh, analytics engine. And also we want to confirm how to uh, recover using DMA. So I wonder on transmitter have to send to operation support system or a directory orchestrator. So that is our future work. So thank you for attention at this presentation. And we uh, uploaded uh, other uh, data of graph uh, to slide share. If you want to any interest in uh, other uh, result of our feasible study, uh, please check uh, this uh, short URL that is a slide share. And also, we have uh, some information if you want to join or uh, use uh, this DMA uh, framework. We uh, wrote uh, some information how to uh, join, how to ask, how to uh, use or uh, something uh, on ESAPAD. Uh, could you check if you have uh, any interest? And also, if we want to uh, contact the directory to us uh, using this email address. So uh, thank you for attention. Uh, any questions? Yeah, quick question. What was the, uh, the overhead you observed on, in, the, uh, in each of the nodes from DMA? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, your question is uh, uh, overhead of each competing node. Uh, that is, uh, if you want to uh, collect uh, several data, uh, that is uh, over 100 or uh, 1,000 uh, data from one uh, competing node and to uh, send uh, like these huge data into a uh, centralized database. And central centralized database have to manage uh, like these huge data and several uh, competing nodes. So data volume is size uh, one of the bottleneck. And uh, also uh, network, uh, no, no, uh, bandwidth uh, or something is uh, using uh, uh, like this huge data, that is uh, another uh, bottleneck. So, uh, did I answer your question? G'day. Um, this whole push model of monitoring is amazing. Like, I think we need to get away from polling, so good work. Um, I have two questions. I think you mentioned this at the end that you generate an alarm from the box because it knows it's broken. You could, why not do the recovery on the box as well, rather than sending it off to a central server, which then says, hey, this box is broken, we should go fix it. Um, and then my other question was around silent failure. So it looks like here we're still relying on metrics that the box has to report to us that says, hey, I'm doing this, I think I'm okay. How do we work on, say, those times when we, all our metrics say we're good, but people are complaining saying, hey, this isn't working, right? So I guess the synthetic monitoring side, or how do we verify who watches to make sure those metrics are actually what we believe they should be. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I, I, I think I, uh, I can understand correctly for the, for the two questions. But that, uh, our first question is regarding the how to, uh, one of the question is how to uh, verify the, the, the the uh, uh, accuracy of the reporting, right? 
or reporting function. I think the reporting is going to be correct. It's the question that your metrics all say your service is working, but how do you verify your service is working? Okay. Like CPU, like because everything here we talked about, so you talked about silent failures. If your CPU dips or your network traffic dips, that's not a silent failure. You know something's broken. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's obvious that we cannot say that the five sub every service uh, working uh, if this parameter is good, but we have to w check various parameters and also. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, a, a various way to to identify the the, the 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 healthy of the services, right? So it's it's we are focusing on the, the one of the aspect to correcting the data as a framework. So it's it's gonna be uh, the ne future work, I suppose. But uh, uh, for, for for the main uh, things like the CPU utilization or uh, network, uh, in most cases, uh, network. Uh, uh, metrics have to be gathered in, in a start point and not to correct everything in a single plate, place. So th that's the, the basic idea and yeah, we are still, still trying to figure out the, the, the whole view of the uh, monitoring. Sorry? Sorry, what about the recovery question? So if you have a box generator alarm that then the server is going to then do something about and try to recover from the problem, why doesn't the server just see that it's broken and recover itself? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned in, in, in the presentation, uh, we are focused, now focusing on the how to collect the data so far. And uh, f for the, for the uh, recovery actions, uh, yes, uh, we are thinking of do it very quick. It means we might need to get action in each compute host, might be. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think we, it depends on the, the, uh, 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 how we illustrate the, the DMA architecture or framework at the end. So yeah, sorry, we, we don't have a clear answer yet here. And w I, I think we, it's, it's, one of the fundamental uh, or, or difficult problem have to be a tackle with the whole of the community. And we don't want to push our architecture or the requirement, but we really want to have a conversation in the community and gather the many use cases, which architecture uh, should be good, which project uh, will be launched, uh, what kind of project we, we should launch or we should do some amendment and the the, the uh, similar project like Ceramita or Monasca. So it's 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 just the the beginning stage of of the, the DM activity. So please join. <laughs> Oh, I'm new to this project, so I have no idea. Uh, so uh, you mentioned the storage is all in memory, is that right? is correct? Yes. For, so for how the long? Uh, how long will those data and the metrics stored for like for one week or longer? Uh, Thank you for your question. I think that is uh, one day is enough for analyzing uh, that one, purpose. One day. Is one day. Uh, okay. be, yeah, because that purpose is uh, recover, so you can uh, have to, does not uh, have to uh, store uh, one week or uh, one month. That is uh, enough one day. Okay. Thanks. Uh, another question is: uh, you you have tested uh, the, the the DMA for like one thousand targets. And uh, how, uh, like, uh, how large the storage size, like uh, a gigabyte or a larger? Uh, sorry, I, at this time uh, we uh, focus on the, to detect microbus traffic, so uh, we uh, does not uh, did not uh, try to uh, correct uh, use the, uh, a lot of target like uh, thousand or ten thousand targets. Now we can focus on uh, to detect microbus traffic. Uh, let me add a comment. So the uh, 
So the uh, cost system mentions that they are one day is enough, but we thinking about for each parameters, each duration. Regarding the microburst traffic, we are thinking about one day is the enough, but so the, maybe the other parameters have a more shorter uh, duration for liveliness. At that time, the, we are getting more data reduction for uh, watching the server. And then the, this storage is cases, it depends on how many virtual machine uh, or BNF in the NFB, NFB world is running, and it's is uh, uh, operate network operator or network architecture is thinking about how many virtual machine is running on. So there, it's is the kind of the okay. uh, yeah thanks. trade off. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, visualization of those metrics and bring it to the user interface and how the ops or the operator? Uh, people to look at into it. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, good question. So they now we are building the architecture. This is okay. so they are. So the uh, now we are thinking about the uh, how first we are thinking about data flow, and on top of them we should create the uh, GUI. Uh, maybe that this is connected to the uh, horizon or sometimes there's some provider. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I think the, the if you can see the architecture, the, we collect a bunch of data in the compute host, and those data will be uh, uh, say do some variation. So the in in most data will be dropped, uh, and do operators or administrators does not need to see those data, right? But they just want to see there's some. Uh, 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 about uh, b about metrics or about data, if there's some issues, right? And those data only can send out to the send out to the uh, central uh, uh, services. So I, I think we we don't have to look at all the the detailed data in each compute. Okay, thanks. Okay, any questions? Okay, uh, thank you for uh, coming uh, to our presentation. And if you want to uh, have uh, any interest in, uh, please check on the appendix on the support or to contact us uh, directly to use uh, this email address. Thank you for your attention.